Assalamu alaikum and welcome everyone to another episode of Danish TV's English language channel. And today we are incredibly fortunate to once again, after roughly a year and two months, to have Professor Noam Chomsky, world-renowned linguist and social critic, moral philosopher, and one of the world's leading public intellectuals for at least half a century now. It is an extraordinary honor and privilege to have you back on our show today. Welcome, Professor Chomsky. Thank you very much. Quickly, my first question, Professor Chomsky. Uh, liberals and progressives in Pakistan tend to see the Taliban as a Pakistani proxy force with no social base or roots or legitimacy in the country, akin to the American Contra proxies in Nicaragua. Do you share such an assessment or do you think a little more nuance is required? Well, like it or not, the Taliban have a fairly solid base in the community. They could not have taken over without that. In fact, they've extended their base. One of the few surprises, in my view, in the last several months uh, was how the Taliban ex quickly expanded their support from their traditional Pashtun base to a much more multi-ethnic, at least tolerance, if not acceptance. The collapse of the former of the warlords who, from other, who based in other ethnic groups, uh, except for the Hazara, uh, uh, they mostly, uh, th that was pretty much a surprise. I don't think anyone, at least I didn't anticipate that. Uh, whether this is support or tolerance is another question, but that they have a base in the rural community is hard to deny. I mean, after all, when the Taliban decided to disappear after the U.S. invasion, they mostly went back to their villages. Oh, well, what does that mean? Then as the uh, and in fact, it seems that at first there was some hope that the American invasion might lead to uh, some sort of development, improvement in the uh, economic and social system. As soon as it turned out that the American troops were just uh, uh, fortifying the old warlords uh, and relying on them to carry out their own uh, violent uh, efforts at domination and control and we're smashing into houses and midnight to arrest somebody and throw them into a torture chamber, bombing uh, uh, wedding parties and so on. Of course, Taliban started emerging again. All of that is a Taliban generating system. Went on for, it's been well described by Anand Gopal, other, a few other journalists who were very close on the scene all the time. American intelligence surely knew it. Uh, well, then the Taliban emerged, gradually expanded their base. Uh, when Trump told them, take over anything you like, all they had to do was wait their time, get ready. When the time came, yes, they took over. As I say, the surprising part to me at least, was the expansion of their base uh, to the other, the Tajik, Uzbek uh, uh, areas, uh, the areas around Herat also, a bit of a surprise. But, uh, and again, to what extent this is support, mm. to what extent it's simply tolerance of what exists is very hard to determine but I don't see how one can question that they are, in effect, the governing authority at this point. Right. Thank you, Professor Chomsky. Just one other question on Afghanistan, particularly in light of the very chaotic way in which uh, the American withdrawal uh, finally took place. Professor Chomsky, with regards to that intervention, many progressives in the region still believe that for all of its faults, the intervention could have possibly improved the situation in terms of human rights and women's rights in the country 
and reduce the repression that was experienced before uh, under the Taliban. So even though many NGOs, as you uh, very well know, were against the initial bombing, many like Amnesty International as late as 2012 did want American forces to stay, genuinely believing that the occupation will be beneficial for Afghans. What are your thoughts on this, Professor Chomsky? The American, when you say it might have been beneficial, sure, the Russian intervention in the 80s might have been beneficial. And in fact, in some ways it was. Uh, the horrible intervention killed maybe a million people. But in the last couple of years, uh, the, situa the situation in Russian controlled areas like in Kabul was quite significantly improving. Uh, the, there were uh, serious human rights activists there. Uh, maybe the most important was uh, Russell Basu, the UN uh, coordinator for women's rights, mm. the well-known international feminist figure who was writing, describing at the end how women's rights had greatly improved in Kabul, uh, not in the countryside where the fighting was, and that uh, women were pretty free to do what they wanted, dress as they wanted, go to the universities, have jobs. Uh, the main danger they were facing was from the uh, US-backed uh, and Pakistan-backed uh, um, Mujahideen, uh, people like the Hekmatyar group who uh, would throw acid in the faces of women who were dressed wrong and so on and so forth. Now, there was a relatively popular government, the Najibullah government, actually held out for a couple of years after the Russians withdrew. Uh, these uh, reports are pretty well supported by other specialists in the area. Uh, Roderick Braithwaite, the British ambassador to Russia, who's a specialist on Afghanistan. Uh, he actually returned in 2006 and wrote in the Financial Times, the major business journal article in which he said that in Kabul, he said, checking in many different sources, including former Mujahideen that found that uh, uh, there was a lot of feeling that Najibullah was probably the best uh, prospect for Afghanistan and that things were better in the last years of the Russian occupation than they were at that time under the American occupation in 2006. When he says we can't be sure how much of this is uh, uh, opposition to what's happening now under the American occupation and how much is realistic interpretation of what things were like. But yes, when you go back to your question, under the, you could have said the Russians could have improved things and in fact in some respects did in Kabul at least in the last couple of years. And it's true that the Americans could have acted very differently, uh, but they didn't. And there was no reason to believe that if they stayed on, anything was going to change. So one way or another, the uh, harsh and brutal American intervention had to be withdrawn. I think it could have been done quite differently if Trump hadn't sold everything out and Biden partially accepted his uh, policy. It would have been possible to withdraw in a more organized fashion to allow local accommodations to take place, to give higher priority to the Afghan peace forces, which did exist, may still exist, uh, and were organizing around the country with uh, local arrangements, accommodations, uh, quite decent policies. Could have been possible to do that. Whether it would have succeeded Nobody's any way of knowing. Right. Or Pakistan has a lot of responsibility for this. We don't have to go into it, you know, it very well. But if Pakistan had acted differently, if the United States had acted differently, things might have been better. Uh, now we're 
facing this situation. And uh, the live question now is how to deal with the catastrophe that has taken place. Here, there are basically two positions emerging. Uh, one of them is essentially the regional uh, powers, China being the dominant one, growing out of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, uh, which have taken the position that they have to recognize the Taliban as the governing authorities, work with them, try to get them to be more inclusive and moderate, but crucially addressing the very serious humanitarian crisis in the country. That means uh, bringing in aid, aid development, uh, trying to shift the economy from the uh, uh, heroin opium based economy to a more constructive use of Afghans quite considerable mineral resources and to try to move in this direction over time. That's one approach. Mm -hmm. uh, within the within this group, basically the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the only opponents so far have been India. India wants to keep to the US program of uh, isolating the Taliban breaking relations with them, refusing to deal with them, uh, cutting off aid, even con even uh, con keeping the Afghan government resources that are that had been kept in uh, New York banks, keep them there, don't let the government have them, pressure the international financial institutions not to support and give them aid. Those are basically the two positions that are developing now from the way I described them. You can see which one I think, you can guess which one I think is preferential. Maybe you would like to frame them differently. That's the way it looks to me. Right. And I think that's the live question now, Absolutely. how to proceed uh, uh, with these issues. Professor Chomsky, you remain an inspiration to generations old and new to continue the work for justice and peace. Again, an incredible privilege to spend time with you. And thank you so much for joining us here on Danish TV, Professor Chomsky. Thank you very much. Take care. Goodbye. Bye.